Hello, everybody, and welcome to another special interview for Adam versus the Man as part of our Texture of Coronaphobia interview series, The Tales of Defiance. We come to you now with Clay Montgomery from all the way in Pinellas County, Florida at Atomic Tattoo. <laughs> And you might be thinking tattoo shops. What? Well, Adam, aren't they all just shut down? Tattoos are essential businesses for the people whose lives depend on them. If you support a family working at a tattoo shop, that is an essential business. That is an essential job you need to survive and to thrive and be able to take care of your family. And with what Clay and government has done as a co-owner of Atomic Tattoo, which has 18 locations and i got i got to check my notes here in tampa bay orlando and milwaukee of course today he's coming to us from the orlando bay or from the tampa bay area uh, in pinellas county where they've had some very interesting law enforcement interactions lately to say the least and i know clay clay is like just chomping at the bit here ready, ready to lay it on local law enforcement who he successfully put in their place but first, before we even go to that, I want to show you what was going on at Atomic Tattoo before these interactions with law enforcement. So we go first to a video that they put out to show what they're doing to celebrate Corona season. Um, I'm sorry, I have to do this for my own protection. Uh, no, our, no. our lawyers told us to. We are in... Uh, a personal service business and a retail business. We're following all the CDC guidelines. Uh, the governor, when he did an executive order, actually left tattoo shops off of it. So it's a super gray area. We were classified with barber shops at first. So they told us to go ahead and open. My boss said to open, said to do that if anybody came by. You know what I mean? Uh, we were instructed that- yeah, We, we report pay. directly to the health department. So yeah, I'm sorry. We were instructed you will be phase two. Yeah, not phase one. Phase two does not say tattoo shop. Though. It doesn't say. Do you do you have a thing that show me that says tattoo shop? It's not included. It's and not on the we, thing. When we inquired, it's, yeah. it's, it's not part of. You're not in phase one. It doesn't say in phase two. And when we inquired, it said that. Okay, well, I'm going to stop right there. At our store in Clearwater, in Lakeland, one. in here, we've already had three or four police officers stop by and give us approval to do it. And give you what? Give us approval to do it. Okay. At Clearwater Tyrone Mall, at Brandon Mall, and uh, Lakeland. I mean, it's the governor's fault because he left it completely off the thing. Like literally the first thing that he did, he said barbershops, tattoo shops. And then the next one he did, he just did barbershops. It was like the secretary must have forgotten to type out the word tattoo shops and everybody's just been guessing. And every county has, you know, done it differently. Polk County actually called us and said, you know, do it. We called the health department. They told us that it, uh, it's completely fine to speak to the police. I spoke to the police. They said speak to the health department. So it's really literally like nobody knows. And we are all independent contractors. Most of these guys have not seen $1 in two and a half months. You know what I mean? We didn't get stimulus. We didn't get unemployment. Those two guys both there both have newborn children. Like we have to do this. And my boss asked me to keep an eye on them because I'm kind of the general manager. And we've been through this at four other shops and they're all continuing to run. And if I was you guys, I would be worried about what's going on out there. I'm temperaturing everybody that comes in. Six feet apart, everybody has gloves, uh, sanitizer. This is the safest place in this entire city. There's no way you could tell me that all those people are six feet apart. You know what I mean? So we need to decide which rules we're going to follow. I would not. My suggestion is that you get clarification, and that should come from the mayor's office. And okay. until you have clarification, because it's not instated uh, from the governor, it's not included in there yeah. in terms of this part of the business being open. Yeah, I mean, it literally is just left off the sheet. So everybody has to guess. And, you know, Polk County straight up said, go ahead and do it. Pinellas County, there was health department said yes, police said no. They're still arguing about it. 
I mean, it is literally up in the air. And we can't close, sir. Like I said, that man has, I'm godfather of that man's four-year-old daughter. You know, like, he, we just chipped in to pay his rent the other day because he was going to be a dick. There's a four-year-old daughter that's my godchild, and I'm, and I'm not stopping. You know what I mean? I was like, if I have to get arrested or whatever, it's fine. But, like, we can't do it, man. You know? And like I said, the other counties, we've already been through this, you know. And like I said, it's in, I know the law is the law, but like we said, like slavery used to be a law. It's fucked up, you know what I mean? Like there's no way that that is safer for spreading bacteria and disease than these two people. Yeah, I have not seen, okay, I have not seen more than four masks out of these 500 people. You know what I mean? You're, like, you know, you're it, but, me I'm yeah, but, time. yeah, but, but you know, I'm right. I mean, but like I said, we, we're not going to stop. So Let, let's talk to him, them. Okay. And like I said, I'm in here because obviously they came to you. And I, do, and I don't mean anything to you, but like I said, what? those two guys right there both have newborn children. They're born in the last month with almost three months of no pay, you know? So, Clay, thank you for sharing that video with us. That is, I mean, ab above and beyond. I mean, I, I have to ask, like, first off, don't you feel silly having to, have, like, I mean, you guys, as, as tattoo shops, uh, as, as a professional tattoo shop, you know, you, you have a very professional operation, obviously. You know, even just basic standards before all of this, you're trained experts in dealing with biomedical waste, with 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 what what amounts to a minor surgery, you know, for being performed all day. I, I mean, you do piercings as well. Yes. So, it, it, do you assume that? I mean, how, how do you feel having to put out a video like this? Atomic Tattoos is taking the coronavirus threat seriously. As professionals, we are trained to manage the risks of bloodborne pathogens and bacterial and viral infections. Everyone else's new normal was our standard. We will now be implementing pre-procedural precautions, including limiting access to the studio to only those who are getting a service done, encouraging physical distancing of clients and staff, excluding any clients or staff who are exhibiting any symptoms, asking all staff and clients to fill out a questionnaire, and asking about a potential exposure, and checking the temperature of all clients and staff upon their entering the studio. We will also be encouraging the wearing of personal protective equipment for all staff and clients. As professionals, we are trained in biohazardous waste handling and cross-contamination. We will continue to follow the standard precautions that have kept tattooing and piercing safe for our clients and staff for nearly 20 years. Thank you. Well, our main goal with the video is to let consumers, uh, our customers know what we're doing to make them safe and to protect them from, you know, the coronavirus, which, you know, the rules keep changing all the time, but fortunately we are trained in bloodborne pathogens. We are trained in biomedical waste. We, we, we know what we're doing. This is everyday work for us. So it's no problem for us to deal with this situation. We're not afraid of it because we understand what's going on. We have the skills and the knowledge and the experience to deal with this. So that's what we're just letting everybody know. I mean, I, I want to say like, this is, this, this is, uh, th there's so many beautiful points out of this story already when, uh, but I, I guess I, I want I want you to tell us one more part of the story here because you had an, an interaction with law enforcement as, as one of your fellow uh, co-owners uh, did one of your locations in Pinellas County dealing with uh, Pinellas County uh, law enforcement. I believe it was sheriff deputies backing up code enforcers, and it's these. I I, I hate to even, like even be pejorative with these individuals because. I, I'm very cautious to never, never make it about the individuals, but it's these dorks in polo shirts with masks, playing with their masks. Go, well, you kind of just have, like, they got to feel like, you know, hallway monitors at, 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 a, at, a, at a middle school where the, the teachers and staff just aren't backing them up and just sent them out into the hall to be like, yeah, tell everybody what to do, but you have no power to enforce it. And they can argue their way out of you, out of it, with you, whatever, with you if they feel like it. Like, like the, tell us how, how first, yeah, okay, so give us a little timeline 
with with corona phobia did you guys shut down and reopen how did this work with the orders give us the timeline first leading up to your commercial that you put together with your procedures okay so uh late march the um the mall that that our store is in here where i am now uh it closed down so we were forced to close the mall itself closed and the landlord can can lock the the door on this place we can't do anything about it so we were forced to close in this particular location in uh i think like the 17th of march the 18th of march other landlords did the same thing to some of our other locations and then um i think probably about the 29th of march uh the the uh, sheriff's department shut down all what they deemed non-essential businesses so we we were basically forced out of working by the government and uh we shut down so we we used that time to figure out what we were going to do when we reopen which has been our main goal the whole time because most of our staff receive little to no help from from any government agencies as far as like unemployment or stimulus or whatever like the, my, my my employees and and staff were just left out to dry so we did everything we could to help them and the and the main thing we could do to help them is let them go back to work uh so the, the mall reopened on May 5th and uh, for, for retail only. Uh, we use that time. Yeah, wait, hold on. It was a retail only. That was specifically to exclude food and tattoo shops? Per personal services. They didn't specifically exclude us from anything ever. And that was been my argument the whole time, but we'll get into that in a second. So they said retail can reopen with 25% um, with, uh, occupancy. So if, you're, if your occupancy is 40 people, you're allowed to have 10. So, and so oh, oh, how, did, how did, the, did, did most of the other businesses then open up and, and attempt to work within those? Um, I think probably numbers? initially maybe 25, 20 to 25% of the, of the stores in, in, in this mall opened up. Um, and we were among mm. the ones that did open at that time. Okay, so yeah, so I, I want to point out a couple of things to the audience here and, and, and tell me if this you know, rings true with your experience about the economic incentivization here that is created when you have this partial shutdown, martial law, arbitrary openings. If, if you're running a business on thin margins and they say, now you can only operate at 25% capacity. Now, if you're a retail shop, it just means longer lines. Maybe it doesn't slow your business down too much, right? But if you're a restaurant or if, if you're uh, the kind of business that depends on people being in the shop to make sales, and you're saying that you're being told 25% and that means 25% revenue, then you, you, that's basically saying you're shut down. It's yeah. basically, you know, right. I mean, the, the, you can't, you're not making a profit. I think those, I would, I would bet that of those 25% of the businesses that came back, they were people who were desperate, who had ways to sort of work around this and maintain most of their revenue uh, with, with the, you know, 25% capacity ordinance from the mall i mean that's just, it's, it's crazy right but the rest of them are just like no we can't operate this way if we do this we're operating to loss you're telling us we have to shut down still yeah um it, our our business depends on people being in the store so if we're limited to who we can have in the store we're limited to the amount of money we can make so yeah that's absolutely affecting us so then what happened next and in, 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 um we with canales um, county we, we opened this, this, this location on May 5th, and then from May 5th to May 11th, we developed a new process and procedure on how we're going to address the issues that were faced with all this. Now, um, as experienced uh, you know, workers with blood, bloodborne pathogens and biomedical waste and all that, we used our knowledge and skills to develop our own plan, and then we implemented it. And we made, a, made that video that you saw to, to let everybody know how we're dealing with it. Then on May 11th, the governor said specifically that barbershops, nail salons, and hair salons can open in the state of Florida. Now, we were shut down at the same time they were, and we are more trained and experienced with, with bloodborne pathogens and biomedical waste than they are. So I decided that I was going to open up because I felt it was safe because we're experienced with this and knowledgeable about it. And my staff needs to go back to work. So they need to make money. Nobody's helping them. We're going to help them. So we, we decided to, to take care of the, take care of that. So that wasn't enough. 
Uh, and and I, I just I just want to point out first of all that this the, 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 I have mixed feelings about coronavirus as a whole as it relates to your situation where I'm generally a germaphobe. I have four tattoos and they've all been done at professional shops with a high standard of hygiene. And one of the things that we're going to see here as we, as we get into this interview is that your standard of hygiene, as in that video, is above and beyond anything the government even could come up with. But in, in my cases with, with these tattoos, you know, I've, I've always been, I've been satisfied. I've been comfortable um, with, with the situations that, uh, you know, gloves and masks and, and, and sterilization and everything else in the tattoo shops was appropriate. Um, and... It, Right now, what, what you are being forced to do, I would, I would bet most people who are comfortable getting tattoos are not among the ones who are most paranoid about coronavirus. Is that fair? Is that a fair demographic observation of your customer base, that they are among the generally more defiant part of the population? Uh, yeah, I would suspect that's true. We've we've asked everybody that's come into the store, are you comfortable with everything that's happening here? We're trying to get feedback from them because the customers are who pays my bills, not law enforcement, not the health department, not code enforcement. My job is to take care of my customers. So I make sure that they're comfortable with everything. So everything yes. we do, we are getting feedback from them. Do, do you Are you comfortable with this? Do you, is there anything we can do to improve this situation and all this? And Everybody has said, and, and we have we have customers that are medical professionals, nurses, dental hygienists, people that work in hospitals. They said what we're doing from what they can see is at the very least what they're doing, if not more. So I'm comfortable with all of this. Yeah, so I, I, it's, I, I, I see this as like you have a customer base and there are two two things that you have to address now in coronaphobia because like, I, i'm generally a germaphobe I, if anything i'm glad that people are more health conscious i'm glad that more people walking into a tattoo shop to get a tattoo are going hmm if the tattoo you know artist had a had, had a virus like corona could i get it from this exposure uh, almost certainly no because they're taking okay yes i'm looking at the yeah the risk is close enough to zero as to be negligible, looking at a risk of a disease where the risk of the disease itself is negligible. So I'm, I'm glad that these extra precautions are being taken, that there's this extra awareness, not because of Corona, but just because of the nastiness of the human petri dish in general. Like if I were to go get a tattoo today, I would be a lot less worried about getting the coronavirus than uh, the, a dozen other bugs out there that I should be worried about that a tattoo artist or, or more likely another customer in the store could transmit. But I, I like, this is all, this is all, you know, nanny state bubble culture, nerf the world safety first mentality. And I think more like in a typical retail situation where say half your customer base has tattoos and the other half doesn't right for, for lack of a better demographic divide here. You know, you have to ask the guys with tattoos to say, put on a mask when you're in my store, observe this distancing when you're in my store, so that the other half of the customers are comfortable being here. And in your case, there, there are probably, you know, a handful of people in, in your customer base, too, who are like, well, I get a tattoo, but uh, is it safe? And you get to step in as the business owner and say, oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> in fact, right now, it's excessively safe and it's excessively safe because the general population is scared and you have to go above and beyond now so that it, because because we we live in such a dangerous status environment where if you're doing tattoos people walking by don't respect the fact that you have the right to set your own level of risk in your shop. Your customers have the right to set their own level of risk. And you have to now comfort the passers-by. They have to be able to look in your shop and go, is this is this a place where Corona is getting passed around? Oh, no, it's not. Okay, good. We're not going to send the cops after you. But somehow the cops did get sent after you despite all of this. Clay, how did it lead to that? Well, the, the, the first interaction with law enforcement uh, was two... The third day, 
the third day after we opened, they said uh, a, a Pinellas deputy came in here and said, uh, we got a report that you guys were open. And like, I'm standing in the store looking at the guy like, what? yeah, we're open. Like, here we are. And he said, are you guys tattooing? <laughs> and I'm, I'm always guarded when I talk to law enforcement. I don't want to incriminate myself. I know what they're doing. I understand how to communicate with them. They said, are you guys tattooing? And I said, this is a tattoo shop. <laughs> so he goes, look, I'm not here for a confrontation. And then I thought to myself, well, what are you doing? <laughs> so I, all right, I said, fine. Yeah, we're tattooing. We're piercing. We're doing everything. We're open for business. And he goes, okay, I need to get some information from you. I said, okay. Takes my name, my phone number, my address, all this. Um, and uh, he, he, he said something very curious to me. He said, what can I do to persuade you to close? Have you ever been talked to a police officer like that? I thought that was strange. And I said, well, considering my staff has gotten little to no support from any government agency, they have, they have bills to pay and kids to feed. The only thing you can do to stop me is take me to jail. And he said, well, well I'm not hold, on, hold on, everything is for sale. Everything, and it, this is what's the price, right? Yeah, we'll shut us down. Give me a million bucks. We'll go home and we'll throw a party. Yeah. We'll I wouldn't take a million dollars to shut down. I wouldn't. Really? I, 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 love, I, I love what I do. That, uh, that would have made up for all the time that you've lost. I mean, you could take care of all the, the lost revenue and 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 and, and uh, wages for your employees no, with that. I would true. say yeah, that's if, they, if they really want to pay you, this, this is now. I, now this is the market at work, right? If if you start a business, and this is this is a way. Actually, you think about it. There is a peaceful way to address real threats. If there was a real threat that we couldn't manage with basic PPE, safety precautions, et cetera, sterilization that you guys are doing, you know, it, it, and I'm sorry, Clay, to sidebar on a little, you know, a little more of a political point here. But anytime someone says we need government, they're saying we need violence. We need a coercive system to accomplish this. And already, and I, I didn't mean to do this. It was just by accident because I was making a dumb joke about Clay getting bribed or paid off. Like, really? But to, no, it'd be, it would be a lot easier to convince businesses to shut down if the government had actually been in a position to compensate people appropriately. And they weren't cutting down, you know, huge sectors of the economy if it was more targeted, perhaps. Then they could have. And they could have said, look, this is this is you know, it's the government doing it, which sucks, but it's a market mechanism in a sense where if you're running your tattoo shop and the community says, hey, we'd really rather you not do business. It's in the best interest of public health and we're going to bribe you to do it. We're going to pay you. We're going to we're going to ask you to do it. We're not going to force you because we respect your private property, but we're going to pay you. We're going to we're going to compensate you as one particular business. Those of us who agree to donate or contribute to this general health fund, you know, we can pool our resources and say we want to compensate people who we actually need to adjust their lives to help stop the spread of a virus or whatever the case may be. And you would have been compensated better fairly and you would have had the option to decline. And they would have said, well, we're going to stand outside your shop and we're going to pay off your customers or we're going to pay them to stay away. You know, or we're, we're going to boycott you by some other peaceful means. Coercion is not necessary. And when society has these better mechanisms of, of controlling each other's behavior, I shouldn't say maybe not controlling, but of influencing right. as opposed to controlling each other's behavior, we have a way more cooperative, peaceful and effective solution for all of this. And Clay's story, the story of Atomic Tattoo opening with this defiance saying, you know what, look, we can prove that we can do a better job of government because right now the market is demanding reassurance and you are delivering it. So uh, let's, sh should we go straight to the, uh, the clip of the, uh, the conversation that, that you're, do you want to please set it up? Who is this? What's the location? It's one of your other co-owners and uh, with, with, with the, the clip with the dorks and the poems. <laughs> Okay, so what what you're see what you're about to see is um, our store in Tampa, which which is um, uh, in in Hillsborough County. I'm in Pinellas County right now. Uh, the city police and the code enforcement came in and tried the code enforcement tried to enforce the executive order on us, and and we were like, well, this is a law enforcement issue. Like 
the cops can do something about it, but the code enforcement people can only look at how many people we have in our store, if the exit signs are illuminated, if we have a fire extinguisher, those kind of things. Like that's what the code enforcement people do. They don't write speeding tickets. You know, they, they don't do brain surgery. They enforce the code. The executive <laughs> order has nothing in there about the codes except the occupancy in the store. We had a sign in the store that said, maximum capacity, whatever it was in that store at that time. Right now it's up to 50%. So I think it was like eight people in that store at that time, whatever. So we had a sign in there and I'm pretty sure by them being in there, they violated it. But whatever, you know, I'm not, what are you going to do? So um, they came in, the code enforcement people, we, 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 we demonstrated everything we were doing. We're taking the temperature of the customers. We're having them fill out a questionnaire. Hold, hold on a second about, about that. Uh, you know, and, and, and I get it. And this is, this is, we, we, as the American people have fundamentally ceded so many rights and that this is now the reality that if, if, if that your privacy, it used to be the drug war. Well, I spelled pot. You have to let me see what's in your car. Now it's, well, you're interacting with other human beings in, you know, less than six foot proximity, as I can see from here. So why don't, why don't you open up your business? Let me come in. Don't not you come out. Right. And, and respect, respect the code, you know, but no, let me come in. And you have the burden of proof now in an enforcement situation where there are armed officers of the law in your face saying, if you don't do this, if you don't comply, if you don't at least submit you were going to be arrested. And that, that was where that was going. And you, your, your, your colleague did an incredible job uh, of talking them down. And I hate to say this because like even, even before coronaphobia, you know, I, I think of myself as kind of an expert in police interactions. I think that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can laugh. You gotta be, I mean, modest, right. Um, you know, and, and, and <laughs> so generally it would be nice if you could just at any point to say, walk away. You know, right now, the fact that you still have to play this game with them, am I being detained? Because if you can articulate a reasonable suspicion that I've committed a crime, you can detain me. But if you can't, then I must walk, be free to walk away and I would like to assert my rights. That you even have to play that game in the first place as a libertarian to me is a little bit offensive. But that's a lot better than where we are today of, excuse me, you need to prove to me as a cop that you're following the executive orders in the state of emergency. And, and I don't know what they are, and you don't know what they are, but I'm going to come into your space and I'm going to demand that you comply and you submit to my authority. And, and yeah. Okay. So you're, so about how, how did, how did this get to de-escalation? Uh, my, my, my partner really did handle it. Well, he's, he's, He's got a lot of patience and tolerance, way more than me, because I wouldn't have put up with it. <laughs> um, but he explained to him what he was doing and then demanded that, that they prove that what they were doing was legitimate. And they fumbled around and they called some people. And they, they didn't know. If you watch in the video, the police officer says half, no, 90% of the time, we don't know the answer. Are you kidding me? 90% of the time, you don't know what you're yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. I'm so glad that they got that. Oh, man, that, was, that is the best sound by ever. <laughs> yeah. All right, so shall we roll tape? Yeah. So, my brother, um, here's what's going to happen. I can't tell you can stay open. I'm also not going to shut you down today. Okay. I'm going to go try to find some type of clarification. We've been trying for a while, you know. Yeah, it might have been. I might get the exact same thing if that's the case you've never seen me again. Yeah. All right. Like I said, I'm not going to shut you down, but I'm also not telling you you can say I appreciate it. Like I said, we well, the only reason why we did this was because we've done it in other counties and stuff. And it's not you guys' fault. It's not my fault. But it's the, me, I've read through some of this about as clear as mud. I understand. So. We, we actually, before we went out, uh, before we went to phase one, mm -hmm. we saw Segway tours running in downtown Tampa. And I was like, what the hell is that essential? It's supposed to be only hospitals and this and that. And they were like, well, it's not on the sheet. So if it's not on the sheet, then it's right. cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're just not. It's... Like I said, buddy, honestly, we, we don't know how, or 90% of the time, we don't know the answer either. That's why I'm saying I'm leaving it as a, I'm going to walk out of here today. If you keep it open, that's on you. Someone might come back and cite you for yeah. it. They might tell me to come back over here. And that's like, why I'm here. i would take the sighting. I'll take the jail. Yeah. That. His daughter is my is my godchild. Like, there's no way I'm gonna let that guy stop. As of now, like I said, we're walking out of here, and what you choose to do is up to you. I appreciate it. And like, it's not amnesty for anything that could happen. I'm just letting yeah, you know, right? totally understand. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Oh my god, dude! Just that. Um, oh, that was that was uh, that's that's rich. I, I'm like this. Will, it's one of those times where I'm like, man, I wish I could have been that guy. I wish I could have <laughs> like. So this lead. So they. What happens after this? Well, they. Mm, Never at any time did any law enforcement or any code enforcement people tell us to stop. They just looked around, didn't know what to do, and then they left. That was the end of it. Um, so they they said, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for soft targets. Yeah. And you were not going to be one that day. No, no. I mean, like I said, we are the guys that work for us have families. This 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 is about people providing for themselves. And that, that's our, that's our main concern. You know, we can, we can do our job, we can do it safely and we can allow the people that, that work with us to provide for their families. Now, if they want to say, look, our goal is for everybody to go on welfare, we're going to have to say it and make it happen. But until that happens, I'm going to run my business. Uh, well, you're, you're reading between the lines very well there, Clay. So, we have one more clip that we want to share that is really the mark of your total victory in this case. <laughs> and it's, it's rare. I mean, I, I go back to, you know, the, the victory that was the Jefferson Monument dance party. And people don't even think of it as the, as the great victory because it, it's not that big a deal in policy. But that we went back, we danced, we didn't get arrested. And now you can, you can dance at the Jefferson Monument without getting arrested. Successful civil disobedience. You know, that was more like high profile in a way that people will notice. And in a way, your victory here is more significant and more meaningful and yet less of a flashy story, uh, less noteworthy, unfortunately. The, the, the video of your confrontation with the police, um, how viral was that? Um, the, the, the clip that we just watched. Uh, it's It's got several thousand views. I, I don't know what it what it is right now. The last I saw, it was... Four or five thousand people had viewed so, that. So, I mean, for for someone without any existing social media base, it's it's a significantly it's oh, yeah. legitimately a viral video to get a few thousand views. But I would I wish it was that kind of video that was was were, was the ones that got it would be the ones that got millions of views. Yeah, because those that is a more educational and informative and and positive and inspiring. I mean. If, if only that cop had just punched somebody in the face at the end of that video, then everybody would have gotten. Oh, yeah. the, I, I, I would have volunteered, Clay. <laughs> I, I, I would volunteer to get punched in the face by a cop if it meant that a million more people would see that beautiful, positive interaction that led to them standing down, that exposed them as the paper tiger petty tyrants that they really are and 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 how they should be treated as in yes 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 that's very nice yes you have a shiny badge yes yes you have an emergency yes you have a fancy law okay that's right well we're doing just fine look now we can show you you if you really need to feel good about this we'll see we can show you we can hold your hand we can walk you we can we can we can show you how much smarter we are than you we, we can we can we can give you a little pacifier to suck on while we give you a tour of the tattoo shop and show you what we're doing and you can you can you can kindly fuck off you know like that, that that's that's you know really i i would get i would get punched in the face if more people could get that message in the, the powerful way that they get from seeing that clip. So what is there anything else we need to know in the sequence of events that led to the Pinellas County Sheriff's announcement? Not really. I mean, we we've been in communication with the health department. We we we've talked to attorneys. We did everything we could to get answers and we're not given any. And I mean, I nobody nobody told me how to how to create this business. We just did it. And we we figured it out on our own. And that's what we did with this situation. We saw the problem and we solved it. So that's it. <laughs> so is there anything you want to say to set up this clip, this announcement from Pinellas County Sheriff's explicitly including tattoo shops in their, in, in their, their white list of the, 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 the king has granted you permission to, to do business with the permission of the authorities. We hereby deign you worthy uh, of, 
of, of operating as a tattoo shop? Well, I, I can tell you this. Um, I, I've had some great days in my life. The days that my children were born, I, I'm recently become a, a grandfather. The day that my granddaughter was born was fantastic. And and this is pretty darn close to that. I mean, I, I feel like I, I've done something that is noteworthy. And, it, it, I, you know, I, I feel like my my effort is legitimized by all this. So I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. That's amazing. All right. So here we go. Roll tape. It says that across all Florida counties uh, that we are in full phase one. So if we look at the task force report uh, from the governor's task force on reopening Florida, and we look at uh, all of the phase one openings, uh, it definitely has changed the landscape. Uh, and the order took effect today. So we want to uh, talk to you a little bit about that and where we are. It's actually very simple uh, compared to what we've uh, talked about in the past, because under the phase one openings, in essence, is that everything can open except for uh, places that sell alcohol where more than 50% of the gross proceeds is from the sale of alcohol. So that means bars. That means your typical bars, lounges, etc. cetera. Uh, everything else uh, can open, uh, and that includes uh, massage locations, that includes tattoo parlors, that includes bowling alleys, that includes everything can open. So Clay, you got to be just... Yeah, it's a beautiful smile you got there, man. Yeah, it, it doesn't get much better than that. And and it is uh, a, a very powerful story. I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you took the time with us today to share this. Uh, are, are there any other takeaways or anything in the narrative we're missing that, that you want to make sure our audience gets out of this? I mean, I, I'm not a slave. I don't need to ask anybody permission to go to work. That was, that was my whole point. So, I mean... Think for yourself, you know, do what you know is right and don't apologize for it. All right. That's so beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, Clay Montgomery of Atomic Tattoo. They have locations in Tampa Bay, Orlando, Milwaukee, all over those metro areas, 18 different shops. And of course, in Pinellas County, where they scored this epic victory with shops in St. Petersburg, Clearwater, Largo, and so many others. Look them up, Atomic Tattoo. I am absolutely happy to give you guys this free endorsement and 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 support and advertising and, and coverage here i think it's not, not just because you have an awesome story that people should replicate i hope other tattoo shops who might be you know on the fence with their reopening wherever they may be are able to learn from your story i hope that other businesses as well who have less immediate physical exposure to your customers than you do in giving them tattoos, that, uh, that, that you take the, the lessons from this as well and that you are courageous in standing up in defiance. Uh, we've, we've covered so many beautiful stories of this with the Meathead Revolt at gyms now opening in defiance all over the country. We brought you the story of the hairdresser and the bar uh, owner in Texas who opened up in Defiance and were met with SWAT teams there. It is all the more important now that we share stories like this, especially as they are being censored on social media. If you're watching this and you like this video, you think this is as important. If you would take a punch in the face for people to get this story as I would, rip this video, repost it somewhere else. And I advise that everybody do that with any content right now that is challenging the government's coronaphobia narrative. We need to stand up and fight the information war at the same time. But we do it most importantly by voting with our feet, voting with our dollars, going out and supporting defiant businesses like Atomic Tattoo. Clay, thank you again so much for joining us. Peace and love, y'all.